Can he make Ooh. it to the end of this round? Because I hate this. Oh, oh, man, he's bad. That's a big elbows. Yeah, I don't think he's scaring him here now. Oh, he's smashing him with these elbows. He's, he's, already... <laughs> he's already dead. Hey guys, welcome to another episode with Mad Dimes MMA. We are back for another episode with Dana White's Contender Series. We did pretty good last time. We get three and two, and with the other two that I got wrong, I did somewhat call it, so I'm not terribly upset with getting two wrong. Like, for example, the heavyweight fight going to, not going to decision. But honestly, I wish I would have caught... Uh, I wish I would have caught how big of an underdog Voyevodkin was when I made that episode. Because right after, when I looked at the odds, I saw Voyevodkin was like a plus 500 underdog. And I'm just like, okay, come the fuck on. That is way too wide. So I placed $10 on it and it cashed. So pr that was pretty good. Wish it would have been a KO, TKO, but hey, you beggars can't be choosers. And I'm sorry about how UFC Paris breakdown came in so late. Just a lot of external life things have been going on. And I'm hoping that fix that and we'll have the next breakdown here as soon as possible but just in the meantime i thought i'd drop some dana white contender series out for you guys so you guys have something to help make you some educated bets with you know what i mean but we're gonna kick this off starting with christian savolier versus jacoby smith now christian savolier he's a heavy-handed boxer with good power he's also got very good grit and is able to weather the storm and stay calm under pressure but something i don't like about him is he has shitty takedown defense. Like, he has the takedown defense of someone who's training out of the Helen Keller gym. Can't hear or see that shit coming. Like, for, like in his fight with Squid Vicious, like, he was weathering the storm. He was landing good power shots. But every time he'd raise that guard, the takedown was there. Like, every time. Like that. Like, Chris, and also, I'm not liking sometimes when I see Savoye throw up that cross guard. I mean, it's pretty good when it comes to boxing, but in MMA, I just hate when people fucking bring up that cross guard. It's just terrible. Uppercuts, uppercuts are right there, and the takedowns are right there. And now he's going against Jacoby Smith, who has very good power and, very, and decent boxing. His real bread and butter here is his wrestling. He's an all-American wrestler. I just watched some clips of him in 2019 in NCAA wrestling, and he is a dominant wrestler. And I think against Christian Savolier, who doesn't have good takedown defense, Smith is going to have a field day. Jacoby is a terrible stylistic matchup for Christian, and I think Jacoby, I, I can't see him losing here. He has everything he really needs. Christian has been hurt by less competition with less power. And even if Jacoby doesn't want to spark him out, he has the wrestling, which I think he should be leaning into because that's how he's going to beat Christian here. He's going to wrestle him to the ground, dominate him. Christian does have good stand-up game, but it's been against way less competition here. And against someone as dominant in wrestling as Jacoby, I don't think, I think his stand-up game is going to do one of two things, Jack or shit, or both probably. But Give me Jacoby Smith to get this done inside the distance. This is going to be an easy one. Complete layup. But moving up the card, we have Abde what is it? Abdele Arami versus Torres Finney. Now, to give, it, give it up to Torres Finney. Getting his third shot in the Dana White's Contender Series. I think he's going to be continuing that streak here. Getting all three wins on Dana White's Contender Series against Arame. Just looking at his tape, he is just not that good. I think this is a big step down for Torres Finney. Because Abdele... He doesn't really manage distance that well. He maintains a tight guard. He's an out of shape light heavyweight. His striking, yeah, he's got power, but he throws way too wild and gets caught on the counters a lot. In his last fight against Medele, uh, he just, he was getting pieced up. He was getting caught, hurt, like so many times until he landed the power shots. And I think against Torres Finney, he, even though he's short and go, relies on the wrestling a lot, he can land good power shots that can put your lights out. But it, but also, I don't think Abdele has the grappling to keep it standing, honestly. I think Torres is going to be able to take him to the mat whenever he wants. So I got to go with Torres Finney here. This is going to be a big step up and probably the easiest fight he's ever had in the Dan White's Contender Series. I think he's going to win wherever he wants. I think the tight guard that Abdele has is not going to make it harder for him to maintain distance. So Finney's going to be able to get up close and land the shots that he wants. And with Arame throwing those wild hooks, I think Finney can land the counters if he wants to. And with Arame's questionable takedown defense, I think Finney can take it to the mat whenever he wants as well. So give me Torres Finney, the necklace punisher, to get this done.
Moving up the card, we have a fun fight, dude. I can't wait for this one. It's going to be David Black Spartan Martinez versus Xavier, Mr. Benjamin Franklin. This is going to be a fun striking match because David Martinez is a fun kickboxer. He's very technical and has very good power in his hands. He can put your lights out. And Xavier, although he's he doesn't have that much experience, he fights like he does. Sorry, it's been a long day. Oh, a bit melted. But he does have that. He, it looks like he does have that experience. Something I'm really impressed with is how he man, manages distance. Like the way he's in and out. Like he, he's out just as fast as he's in. Like he's managing distance better than a lot of these bigger guys that he's faced in the past. Like, and David Martinez, he has his best moments. A lot of his, uh, a lot of his wins are when he gets power shots off the counters. Well, a lot of his finish wins. And I think he's going to have a have a hard time finding those counters against Xavier Franklin, who's very good at maintaining distance. I've seen, He's maintaining distance better than people I've seen who have three times the experience this kid has. David Martinez, in my opinion, is going to be the te more technical striker, but Xavier is going to be way better at maintaining distance. So this is going to be a very close one. So I'm going to be going leaning with the value here at Xavier Franklin to ma maintain the distance and slow down the pace and make it harder for D David Martinez to really get things rolling. Moving up the card, we have Alberto Montez versus Carlos Calderon. Now, this is a shit show. These guys suck. I'm just going to say how it is. These guys fucking suck. I... Can't find many redeeming qualities for these jackasses. Like, Calderon, he strikes like an asshole. Like, he throws looping hooks with his chin up in the air, just begging to get knocked out. And he has been hurt on the feet. Alberto Montez, similar. He's not, he, his boxing is shit. He boxes like a ki blindfolded kid trying to hit a fucking pi pinata. But his redeeming quality in the striking is he has good kicks he mixes up his kicks very well they're very they're very heavy very impactful and he he has sick leg kicks body kicks and he can throw it to the head at times which can which can lead to a knockout but these guys the real bread and butter for these guys is the grappling and I gotta lean Carlos here. I think he's more dangerous in terms of latching up submissions and he's get, and he's really big for the featherweight division. And in terms of grappling, I got to go with the guy who's going to be bigger for the division and who I can trust to get the takedowns. Alberto will probably be the more dangerous fighter on the feet in terms of striking because his kicks are actually really good. But he does tend to fight on the back foot a lot. And I can just see him getting, getting pushed back up against the cage, squaring up and Carlos getting a takedown because Carlos is going to be the better opponent in terms of getting takedowns here so I'm going to lean Carlos here to get the takedowns get it to the mat latch, a, latch up a sub and get it done moving up the card we have DR Nergaza versus Bartos I am not going to pronounce that last name uh, this is going to be a fun fight DR is a good has good power in his hands not necessarily the most bet not necessarily the best striker but he does have good power. His real bread and butter is going to be the grappling. But the problem with his grappling is I'm not too impressed with his entries and takedowns. When he gets it to the mat, he's very good at maintaining top control. And he's very dangerous on top. But the problem with him is getting it to the mat. Because his takedowns aren't all that. Like, his entries just aren't that good. He kind of man wrestles them to the mat. And he shoots from too far away from my liking. And although he has power on the feet, he's, his volume isn't that great. Bartas, he doesn't have that much power on, in his hands, but he has a lot of uh, volume. And, he has, and he, he, th he has a lot of volume, and he manages to keep up a good pace. And he has a solid gas tank, too. This is going to be a tough one. Because do you trust Daria to get to this get this to the mat and maintain top control or do you, do you trust Bartas to keep it on the feet and out volume Daira because I don't really trust Daira on the feet he does have power but I just don't trust his low volume I think and Bartas is only like a plus 168 I think I'm gonna trust Daira to get the takedowns because light heavyweight is not that very technical and 
generally with the grappling. And I think being a grappler up in those heavier weight classes gives you an edge. And there's not, and Bartos hasn't fought that many grapplers, so his grappling defense is rather suspe suspicious. So I'm going to go with Dyer here. He has power and he has grappling. His real question mark is getting it to the mat. And I think I'm just going to have to trust him on that one. This isn't going to be much of a bet for me. I think I'm going to take this fight to start round two or maybe the over because Bartos doesn't have that much power and Dyer is going to slow down the pace with his grappling attempts. So I'm going to take Dyer to get this one done, probably by decision. Probably getting his wrestling going later into the fight and edging it out 29-28. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoy. 